Good morning, Glencliff friends and family. It's so good to have you all with us here this morning. What a beautiful day. It's good to know that we are together because no matter where we are and where we are gathered, God is with us here. God is with you there. God is with all of us. Thanks be to God. Um, we have one quick mission announcement, and that is um, that we are still using our fellowship hall um, to provide distribution of food to outreach workers in the Nashville community that are um, picking up food boxes that we have prepared and then are taking them out to encampments. So um, on our Facebook page, you might notice that we have listed some of those items that we need. Um, we are at the church from um, 9 a.m. until 12 noon, Monday through Thursday, and we will meet you in the parking lot um, and, and um, receive those items if you are interested um, in donating. Also, if you are in need of a food box, we have food and we would love to make and deliver a food box to you. So please let us know. We would be um, happy to serve with you and to serve you um, through this ministry that is continuing even during our time apart. So we're thankful to be in ministry with our community. Um, we have some birthdays to celebrate today. Um, Robin Lewis, um, Carolyn Lewis's daughter, had a birthday on June 8th. Happy birthday, Robin. Um, our own lay leader, Justina Stickney's birthday was June 9th. It was her 21st birthday. She went on a quick trip with her mom to celebrate. And Justina, we love you and we are thankful for you. All the things that you do for and with our community. Um, it's really special that you are a part of this family. Um, so happy birthday. And then also Mary Pratt's birthday is June 11th. So Mary Pratt, hope you had a really good birthday and that you were able to celebrate um, with your friends and family. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Happy birthday to you. invite you to join me in our call to worship. We meet in the presence of God and we do not meet alone. With the angels in the highest heaven, we gather to worship the Lord. With Abraham and Sarah, we gather to worship the Lord. With the saints of every age, we gather to worship the Lord. We embark on our own journey of faith. God's holy name be praised. God makes of us a great people. God's holy name be praised. In the desert and in the den, God's holy name be praised. We journey in the presence of God and we do not journey alone. Amen.
Cliff. We want to lift up the following joys and prayer requests among our community. If you have any additional joys or requests to share, please email us at glencliffum at gmail.com or call us at 615-833-5010. At this time, we ask for healing prayers for our friend Nelia Kimbrough. Thank goodness, thank God, on Thursday, she was able to come home and get a clear report on her lymph nodes, which is so exciting. Um, Annette and Calvin are getting custody of their grandson, and we hold them in prayer during this transition and welcome him to the community. We hold our friends struggling to survive during a lack, due to a lack of health care or resources, and we hold those people close to our hearts. We pray that we can all do the work of dismantling white supremacy and living into God's vision of radical love and intentionally open community. And holding these things close to our hearts and in our minds, let us pray. Gracious God, you are the God of hospitality. You have invited all into your home, to your table, into your arms. Lord, help us to remember that no one is better than anyone else in your kingdom. Help us to then treat each other the way you treat people. Generous God, because you treat us with your tender love, we take time to pray for our friends family members, and others who need you more than ever. Pour out your healing on all who need it. Be generous with your transforming love for those who need it in their lives. Bring forth your reconciliation in families and in places where it is needed. Gifting God, you give us the gifts of the Spirit to build a better world, a better nation, and a better neighborhood. We continue to remember our siblings of color struggling within unjust systems that threaten and enact violence against them, and therefore against all of us. We thank you for the movement that has already taken place through empowered local leaders demanding justice and peace. Empower us to continue to be your hands and feet, to continue the work that needs to be done here and in so many other places. There is none like you, God, in your love, your generosity, your gifting, and your hospitality. And we thank you that you are in our lives, working in us and through us to let people know your kingdom is open to all. As children of Abraham and Sarah, we pray. Amen. Good morning, Glencliff. I invite you to pray with me this morning. God, as your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, let it be you who shows up in this space. Let it be you who would appear before us, not me or any other distraction, but you, God. Bless this time, bless this scripture, and bless this proclamation. In your son's name I pray, amen. This morning's scripture comes from Genesis chapter 18, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 15. Now the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the tent door in the heat of the day. When he lifted up his eyes and looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass by your servant. Please. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a piece of bread that you would refresh yourselves. After that you may go on, since you have visited your servant. And they said, So do as you have said. 
So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, prepare three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make bread cakes. Abraham also ran to the herd and took a tender and a choice calf and gave it to the servant, He and he hurried to prepare it. He took curds and milk and the calf which he had prepared and placed it before them, and he was standing by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, There in the tent. He said, I will surely return to you at this time next year. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah, advanced in age, were old. Sarah was past childbearing. Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I've become old, Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also old? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I indeed bear a child when I am so old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah denied it, however, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So for the rest of June, our worship will center the stories of Abraham and his, let's call it, dynamic family, which includes Sarah, Hagar, Isaac, and Ishmael. And in these three stories over the next three weeks, God will show up and we might begin to wonder how God is doing the same in our own families, in our own communities, in our own lives. And I'm willing to bet most of us have heard of Abraham and Sarah, and maybe this particular story is familiar. It's certainly a classic. But these other characters that show up in this story what the text calls three men or three humans are very hard to identify. They're not necessarily male or female, but Abraham interacts with them as if they were all God. Does anyone notice how the three of them, which is plural, turns into the Lord, which all of a sudden is singular once they start speaking? And we, before we get excited about explaining the Trinity with these three persons, let me remind you only one person of the Trinity has a body like a human. One of the immediate questions of this text is, who are these people? And I'll say, early on in the Bible, like here in Genesis, it's actually quite common for the text to describe God in human terms, being near and accessible to humanity. I'll say that again. It's quite common for the text to describe God in human terms, being very near and accessible to humanity. Think about when God walks with Adam in the garden, or when God's described as having an outstretched hand, a a face or the backside of God that Moses catches a glimpse of. Our story today is better understood when we hear the chapters before and after as well, which is true for most stories in the Bible. We know that God has already visited Abraham, promising many, many generations. God and Abraham are in covenant and have been speaking with one another, but we just aren't really sure how they are speaking. We also know that angels of the Lord exist um, because that's who visits Hagar in the wilderness in the preceding chapter. The chapter after today's story talks about how two angels left the scene to go to the neighboring city and that they left Abraham and who remained but the Lord um, as they continued to talk things out. So knowing all these, what happens before and after, it might be safe to say that these three humans are really the Lord God with two angels beside God. 
I hope that helps set the scene a little bit. That God in human form has two angels in human form appearing to Abraham. If this were somehow a test of Abraham and Sarah's hospitality, they would have passed with flying colors and earned probably like a five-star Yelp review. The way Abraham runs out to greet them and Sarah helps prepare the food so that they may sit, relax, and eat under the tree. In verse 5, Abraham expresses that he wants the visitors to be refreshed by the food. A, bra- a better translation to me um, might be sustained, so that might they might be sustained by the bread. So it's really compelling to read this story and praise our mother and father of the faith, Abraham and Sarah, about how they welcome the stranger and show hospitality. This is a Christian virtue to live by, no doubt about it. But the truth is, at this point, the Lord is not a stranger to Abraham. They are in relationship. They are in covenant together. The Lord God has made a promise and is now making good on that promise. When we step back and remember who initiated this relationship and who is nurturing it, it's God, right? When Abraham thought he was sustaining God with morsels of bread, this visit really was much more about God sustaining Abraham's family and sustaining their promise together. Both Sarah and Abraham, distressed by the impossibility of this promise coming true, distressed even to a point of laughter, were in relationship with a sustaining God. I like how sustain, that that term, carries the connotation of both strength and nurturing care, which God embodies simultaneously as the parent to not only Abraham and Sarah, but as a parent God to Isaac. That same Hebrew word that I'm translating as sustain appears in Psalm 94 as well. And it reads like this. When I thought that my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, sustains me. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Can wicked rulers be allied with you, those who frame injustice by statute? They band together against the life of righteousness and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock, my refuge. Glencliff. I'm here to tell you about a God who desperately loves you. A God who sometimes takes the form of human beings just so that that God can be close to you. This is a God whose love is so steadfast and faithful that all of God's promises are kept. And a God who will meet you outside in a tent or wherever you may find yourself, this God will show up. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer God, Amen. When the poor ones who have nothing still are giving when the thirsty pass the cup, water to share. When the wounded offer others strength and healing, we see God here by our side, walking our way. gives the suffering consolation when expecting brings to birth hope that was lost when we 
creatures of love, not the hatred all around us. We see God here by our side, walking our way. It's like a chalice Dream with gladness When our voices fall and clear Sing out the truth When our longings free from envy Seek the humble going to share that with you this morning. Um, as I share, I do want to just remind you that you can send your check into Glencliff UMC at 2901 Glencliff Road, Nashville, Tennessee, or you can donate on Facebook. Okay, so the story is this. Um, you may know that I was at 61st Avenue United Methodist Church for a long time, and one night when I was there many years ago, I was sitting next to someone who's homeless, and um, he was a kind man, always kind to me. Um, his name was Oliver, and he reached over and put a dollar bill in my hand, and I didn't know what he meant by it, and so I got up during the offering and put it in the plate because I thought maybe he wanted me to give it to the church for him. And then after the service was over, he put five $1 bills in my hand and he said, I wanted to give this to you. I had a good day and I want you to have this. I was stunned because here was this man who um, did not have a home and he was giving me money and I had not asked for anything and he didn't want anything in return. He just gave me this gift. And so I shared the story with another congregation and um, one of the congregants, Debbie Alvarez, said to me after the service, when you told me that story, I thought of the five talents, which if you've not 
read the story of the five talents, you can Google it and you'll find this Bible story. But she said, it's like that. You better be careful about how you use those five dollars. And so I started a fund where we would receive matching grants of five dollars and we would buy animals through Heifer International. This has been a long time ago. We ended up with so many, many, many times the one gift that Oliver gave. That gift of five dollars was multiplied so far and blessed so many people. And so as you consider your offering today, I just want you to know that no matter your gift, how big, how small, it is, it is something for us to treasure and for us to do something miraculous with. And I believe that we will. So I pray that the Lord blesses you this week. I know that God will bless the giving of the gift. Let us pray now. Most loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the gifts that you've given us. Thank you, God, for the generosity that is in our hearts because we know that the generosity is part of your divine image that is instilled in us. We pray, dear God, that you bless these gifts as they're given, that they will be multiplied for your kingdom's sake, that the human family will know your love because of these gifts. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Have a blessed day.
Heaven help me when I feel alone To shine just a little bit more like Joe And think just a little bit more like Joe And come across a little bit more like Joe And be just a little bit more like Joe Y'all, I just want to give my gratitude um, to this congregation, those who I've already been chatting with and uh, met and seen from afar. Uh, it's been awesome to be so, part of a, such a great congregation. Um, and for those of us who have not met, I look forward to that day. Um, until then, I'll give you this benediction that uh, we would remember the Lord our God, the one who is very near to us, um, the one who is rich in steadfast love and the one who sustains us. That God would sustain you today and for the rest of the week. Peace and amen. Oh, my. I'm gonna let it shine.